Here we go. Yeah, well, here, there we go. Just shook hands very awkwardly. Okay. Well, uh, my name's Mark. Um, I'm uh, art director at Mojo Bones, and um, our game is Impact Winter. <laughs> um, we've been uh, working on the game for a little over two years now, and um, we've been in full development, I suppose, for a little over a year, just coming up to beta. Um, very small indie team based in South London, uh, five guys, started out as three guys. Um, and uh, I think that's probably about it. Yeah, here we are. So we kind of have some opportunities like for example the games to play it already. Okay. Um, when I just recognize this uh, the inventory system, mm -hmm. is this going to be in the final game that you can just pick one item? Or is it going to be like you can just uh, search a car and get all the items? Or what, what are your plans with the inventory system there? Okay, all right. So you can, um, it, w we, were you moving? Uh, Using the move function, or will you? Okay, so if you press Y, it just takes it automatically. Oh, you just spam okay. Y, and it will just take, 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 take. Okay, that's, that's okay. It's <laughs> all right. It's in there. We thought of it. It's all right. <laughs> so, um, what are your plans on like uh, playtime, or um, maybe how big is uh, the world going to be? Okay. Um, well, the map is approximately two and a half kilometers by two and a half kilometers. Um, it is uh, approximately, well, um, you, your, your aim is to survive for 30 days, but your primary goal is to bring that rescue timer down, um, which is where it really differs from other survival games, which have you perpetually lasting for as long as you can. Ours kind of flips that a little bit on its head. Um, uses a kind of uh, old school you know JRPG element as well with the XP system or RP in our case rescue points um, so that's that's a main objective of yours is to really reduce that rescue timer um, so on an arduous playthrough I suppose uh, you're looking at around 12 to 14 hours for 30 days but bringing that rescue timer down there's you know there's a speed run element to the game as well so you could probably look to half that so you're looking at maybe seven to eight hours i reckon uh, yeah. okay yes they can die um it's in your interest to not have them die <laughs> <laughs> you know, they are your team after all. But um, no, the, the 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 kind of premise there is that each of these NPCs have they have their own unique skill set. Um, as a leader, there is a role system um, that you can um, unlock um, as you you know um, unlock achievements throughout the game, um, and you retain those on new playthroughs as well. So it's like game plus essentially. But the role system is really where it c you, you come into your own as a leader because you're, you're, you're delegating, you know. You're basically saying, you know, you want this uh, NPC character to be, uh, to watch over the fire in the church to make sure the fire is currently stopped, you know. You want this one to go out and look for fuel. You want this one to go out and scavenge for supplies. You want this one to be, um, you know, um, uh, go out hunting. You want this one to be a heavy sleeper. You want another guy to be a tech head, you know. We've got all these role systems in place where um, it's unlockable over time, um, and but as I say, they stay unlocked, you know. But that is the kind of the leadership quality that's the, that we've got in the game. Um, each of those characters has its has their own unique skill set. So Christoph, he's the tech head, so he's a young guy, but he's um, responsible for upgrading your drone, Acolyte who's very much like a Swiss army knife. You know, he's, he's your sidekick out there in the void. Um, you have Maggie, who's um, responsible for church upgrades, um, things like generators for generating power to the church, um, collecting water, um, uh, 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 door, uh, um, um, uh, church security is another one, you know, trip wires, gating, you know, um, high security windows and doors so that you don't get scavenger attacks. Um, Wendy um, is um, the uh, she's kind of like the mother of the group, you know. So she's in charge of medicinal supplies uh, and crafting, rather. She's also uh, um, she deals with um, nutritional uh, side of things. So you can eat foodstuffs that you find, but they have relatively sort of low statistical value. But when she crafts recipes, you get a higher nutritional boost to your stats. 
so that's her crafting and then lastly you've got Blaine and Blaine deals primarily with um, weaponry and your exploration tools and stuff so it's obviously important for you to keep these characters alive and the other th important thing to note about the characters as well is that when you begin the game you choose a character path and that's kind of like a, an added layer of story on top of the game in general um, and it also gives you replay value because when you choose that character you're obviously going through their story and their missions so so to speak um, but you can't you can't experience all the characters missions in any one playthrough so there's replay value there as well um, so yeah the NPCs are quite important but you can you can complete the game without them the, the church is your primary hub uh, and that's where the NPCs are based um, you have the ability to craft campsites um, around the world so Blaine will give you, uh, well you bring back supplies for, Gray, uh, for Blaine, sorry, he crafts you your camping supplies uh, and then you can go around the world, you know, as far away from the church as, as, as you can really is, is more beneficial because they almost act like miniature churches, um, so you, you get all the benefits of the church but you get it kind of out there on the move, so you get to sleep. Um, you get to cook, you get storage, you get to um, capture water, you know, from uh, like a snow catcher. Um, you get to stay in contact with the team at the church. Um, so they're quite important to survival in general. They're, they mean that you can go on longer expeditions um, without having to worry about coming back to the church all the time. But of course, you know, your, pl your, 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 your play vicinity will start small. And obviously, the more that you craft, the longer you'll be able to, the further, sorry, the farther out you'll be able to go. Yeah. Yeah, that's that. That's uh, Mitch Murder. Um, he is uh, a, a good friend that I met f uh, f about four or five years ago now, um, and we've kind of been looking for an excuse to work together ever since. I mean, he's always been interested in um, getting into game soundtracks, um, and um, but we didn't we we didn't just want to get him involved with anything, you know, uh, we just for the sake of it. We wanted it to be a, a good fit, you know. And we're all of a similar age, you know, we're, we all grew up with the same love of the same movies, the same music and so forth. So I think when he saw the game that we were making and, you know, we're, we're all, as I say, we're inspired by the similar sort of things, you know, he connected with it and he wanted to, you know, he was kind of excited to be a part of it, you know. So um, we started quite early on, but we, uh, we, we wanted him to be, you know, um, as it, it wasn't gun for hire, you know, we wanted him to be as much a kind of member of the team as anyone. And we didn't manage him, we didn't tell him what to do, you know, all we told him was the kind of flavour and the feel that we were going for, like old sort of John Carpenter B-movie type stuff, you know, um, maybe like there's a little bit of Vince DiCola in there, there's a bit of Fultemeyer in there, you know. Um, but ultimately, we wanted to say, you know, you put your stamp on it, you know, and we don't want to kind of dictate because we're coming to you because we're fans of yours as much as, you know, you might be fans of ours. So um, we let him get on with it. And e everything he sent back was great. We didn't change anything, you know, and it, awesome. And I, I mean, I think it's a really strong soundtrack. I mean, it was stand up in its own right, definitely. But it's a character in itself. It was important to us that we didn't, we didn't, overbear the the experience of the game with lots of sound effects and unnecessary voiceover and things like that you know we wanted the music and the atmosphere to almost to be characters in their own right you know and to evoke a sort of feeling in you when you play the game and I, I think it's done it really well Yeah, uh, well, uh, the rescue timer is a, is a big one because, you know, most survival games you are trying to survive for as long as you can. Uh, you know, the introduction of the rescue timer, you know, it, it means that you're effectively, you know, lowering that time, you know. Um, you want to get rescued as fast as you can. Um, so that's quite a novel twist, um, we think. And also the role system, you know, the role system is pretty important and, and, and the fact that you are part of a team you know you're leading a team you know it's not just a solitary experience 